Hello everybody and welcome to this episode of the BK Course Guides series aimed at those playing tour play in Golf Clash, whether you're stepping up to a new tour completely or having to relearn a new course as part of the course reshuffles within the game. We're going to look at general overviews and uh, suggested routes and elevations for all of the nine holes of the Chateau Lavande course, regardless of T. So it doesn't matter what tour this course will be in, hopefully the routes shown will help you plan your gameplay. Starting with the par fours, then going on to the par fives, and then finishing with the shootouts, where I will give you my thoughts on how close you need to be to the pin to be in with good chance of winning the game. Before we get started, please do remember to subscribe to the channel and check out the other playlists on the channel homepage. All right, here we go then. Let's start with the par fours. All right, first of the par fours, and we've got three lines to look at here, depending on the wind, of course. So black line is the best for tailwind. If we do have a straight tailwind, definitely we really need to be thinking about going for the green. If you can, of course, go with a decent ball that is not going to compromise your shootout. 15% elevation on the drive. Go with as much topspin as you can. You may well need overpower depending what the wind is doing and what tee you are playing from. But a little bit of right spin as well. Bouncing over where the red cross is. And if you get a good roll down, you will kind of roll through the rocks there to the where the top of the 30% box is and nicely out onto the green or the fringe it is a bit of a lottery shot though there is a point in the rock that can kick you to the left but even then you do still have a makeable shot with the rough iron uh, white line if you don't have the clubs or the balls for it you can still go there and that does suit more level crosswind as well as crosswind tailwind but watch out above the blue cross those bushes are in play and also you will need a lot of left spin here if you go too far to the right the ball will catch the slope and around the tip of the first white arrow and roll into the rough in most scenarios if you do not aim and go with more side spin to the left. From there, you're either going to be left with a wedge or a short iron playing 10% at distance of club. Blue line really is more for third tee uh, up in the higher um, wind strengths as well. 10% extra on the drive. If we do have headwind, that is the route I will go. Bounce over there and then you will hopefully be left with a max distance long iron or a minimum distance wood club. That does play quite considerably downhill, especially in higher winds. 30 or 40%. But a very, very good chance for an eagle. Now this par 4, again, very, very good opportunities for an eagle, regardless of the tee you are playing from. Two options here. If we don't have straight tailwind, i.e. crosswind or headwind, then the black line is a good shout. Go with max topspin. I do need plenty of topspin, really, recommending here, to clear the rocks and roll down there. 10% extra. That will then leave you a maximum distance a short iron shot with the black line there, or a minimum distance long iron. 20% is the guideline for the second shot on the black line. If we do have tailwind, we can send it. 0% on the right, and we will need to go with some top spin, left spin, and left curl, and maybe some overpower as well, depending what uh, clubs you are using and what balls you have as well. And we want to be bouncing straight onto the second piece of fairway and then clearing the sand and rolling very nicely down there. You can roll too far on this approach though, so a little bit of moderation is advisable. If you don't get uh, a glitch roll and you do end up parked up there towards the end of the main piece of fairway, you have a very, very good chance. Minus 10% elevation uh, is what I would start with here. And that is going to be a very, very close to minimum distance short iron shot. I would recommend counting up rings from the min line if you are going to go with that route. Very nice green here. There is a little glitchy spot to watch out for at the time of recording on the video, so just be mindful of that. But either route, you've got a very, very good chance for an eagle. Final par four and a slightly trickier shot to be dropping here, and the wind does have a big effect on which route you're going to want to take. Uh, the right-hand route we can play really in all winds. The blue line first is the send it shot if you do have straight tailwind. By all means, go for that. It's one of those, even in tour play, uh, I would recommend going for it because if you don't end up on the fringe or the green or the fairway, you do, uh, in most cases, have a very short rough iron shot, which you could even sink for the eagle and avoid the shootout. 
White line you can play its best with the quarterback or the rock. But if you don't have that, you've got to think about the shootout. Then just lay up, bounce over to the middle patch of fairway of the three on the right. 20% extra. From there, you are playing massively downhill. If you can do a rough bump, then go with that. If not, you can either bounce down there or go with backspin just before the fringe. Either way, play it 30% elevation and that will be a true club distance. I should mention the send it shot I tend not to play at 20. I tend to go 10% on that one. If you don't fancy the right hand side and you are into the old power slice or curl shot, then you could go left side as well. Obviously slice, we're just going to be using a slice adjustment there. If you are going to play a standard shot, I would play at 10% elevation. It all depends what role you get there. I do favor the right hand side. If you go uh, quite far down the fairway, you're not really going to have that much elevation to deal with. But if you don't get the roll and you are kind of halfway, two thirds of the way along the fairway on the left, you're going to have more downhill elevation needed. So between 10 and 20% for the second shot. On to the par fives we go now. And this one, the first one here, is quite a tricky one, especially if you do have headwind or any headwind angle from any of the tees. It is a lengthy hole and the fairways have been very, very well designed here to make you really work for the eagle or even an albatross chance. Right side is my preferred play. If we do have tailwind, then we'll be going with top spin, left spin, left curl and maybe some overpower as well, depending on club and division. And we will be trying to clear the sand there on the white line. 10% extra minimum elevation. Obviously, if you do have stronger wind, especially with cross tailwind and direct tailwind, you may want to go with 20%. If we cannot reach over there, then lay up with whatever driver you are going to be using. 10% extra and we just want to park the ball up before the rough. Bear in mind, if we do land directly in the rough or don't make it over, you are going to have... Uh, unless you've got really strong uh, caddy wind or hero wind, you are going to have difficulty getting to the green area in two. Uh, either way, white line, if you've carried over there, you will have a very good opportunity with the long iron for a rough bump aiming directly above the sand there nearest the green. 0% elevation or even minus 5, maybe minus 10. All have been used on this once, so go with whatever works for you and what suits the wind. Bear in mind, if you do have tailwind, you will be adjusting into the bunker. The black line there will be wood club and we just want to play a containing shot to get the ball to the right hand fringe of the green in that case. 10% there. Obviously, if you do adjust into overpower, make sure you compensate for that one. Chances are um, you, you are going to be playing with the wood club. Like I said, you're not going to reach with the long iron on that one. Uh, and of course, you don't know what the wind is going to be. Blue line is an option, really a simpler option for front tee if you don't have the clubs to really go for the rough bump or play aggressively. It does give you a clearer line to the pin. Finally, one that isn't marked, but I will mention it anyway, as a very technical shot to the center patch of fairway bouncing over there. Uh, and then that will leave you a chance with a rough bump with the wood club. However, that is more of a tournament route. For tour play, I would suggest right side. Power three balls, as usual, will be a minimum on this hole. Again, a fairly lengthy par 5 on this one, and I've only got one route shown here because that is really the route we will play in all wins. I don't really favour the left side here at all. Once again, power 3 ball needed on this hole. 10% extra on the drive, either bounce over if you do have horrendous amount of uh, headwind, especially from third tee. If not, go for it. Bounce directly where the blue cross is. You may well need to push up and go with overpower. But go with plenty of top spin and a couple of ours side spin to the right. We want to gain as much distance as possible. Then second shot, hopefully we can still play with the sniper. 30% general elevation here, however, sometimes we do go more like 40%. This is a bit of a drag in headwind, to be honest, you just have to do what you can. Uh, there is a rough bump as well um, towards the tip of the second arrow, just to the right of the sand, if you want to play aggressively. But if not... Get to green, get your eagle, which would be my recommendation in tour play. Obviously, in tournaments, we want to chase the albatross. But this one, more than likely, is going to be a shootout hole. Unless, of course, your opponent has made an error and you can capitalise. In which case, fairways and greens, take your eagle and win outright.
Plenty of options here on the last par five. Any form of tailwind, we go down the middle, bouncing on the white line where the blue cross is on that little island. Plenty of top spin here, and we need to aim for the centre of the fairway. 10% elevation. Again, gain as much distance as you can. From there, you will have either a wood club, or if you're lucky and you get loads of roll, you could even play a max distance long iron to the green. 20% elevation, because this does play downhill. Black arrows, they're going to be in crosswind or any form of headwind again though with these par fives you do get direct headwind this does make this hole a bit of a drag 10 percent max top spin we will need side spin to the left and some left curl as well this hole does benefit drivers with six bars of top spin and upwards obviously for rookies have to go most likely with four and a half and over power but in any situation any tour any t power three ball once again second shot on the black line is going to be the wood club if you have to use the sniper, then you may well need to go with overpower. Again, in headwind, this second shot is awkward, but play it 20%. You can either bounce over or go for a rough bump. But once again, in tour play, chances of albatross pretty slim. Just survive the hole and take it to shootout. If you are enjoying this guide, be sure to check out the channel homepage on YouTube or visiting bkgolfclash.com where you'll find lots of other Golf Clash content, including general walkthroughs for all tournaments in the game. Main tournaments, major tournaments and also nine hole cups. Right then on to the shootouts and the first of them is here. Again, we have a few routes here. The black line I'm going to put on there if you are brave and you know your adjustments Go for it, because this is a brilliant opportunity of getting really close, if not dropping hole in one on the shootout. That is the rough bump. I do prefer that, though, to be honest, from the middle tee, because it is with the sniper. Crosswind and tailwind, that will usually play one-on-one, -on -one, but obviously in headwind you will need to play more than 10% on that one. Blue line, some people do take. I tend not to do that one, to be honest. The bounce is a little bit erratic, but I am going to put it there as an option. But in all cases, and really in tour play for the shootouts, the white line is my favourite one. Rookie division is going to be with the long iron, 20% uh, extra general elevation. Pro and expert, of course, are going to be with the sniper. And um, master, or rather third T, should I say, for tour play. Again, that is going to be a sniper shot, but you will need to back up a little bit further than the landing point that is shown. The green is pretty true here. And this is not one of the more difficult shootouts, so you really do need to be within three yards to be in with a chance of winning. Now this one is a little bit trickier, and that is because the green, after the pin, after a couple of squares, beyond the pin does slope down dramatically. So if you do come in too long, too hot, you are going to roll into the rough at the back, and you will be about 10 yards away from the pin, which is not ideal for the shootout. 20% extra general elevation. Obviously, the uh, shot you're going to be playing here is dependent what T you are going from. Uh, first and second T are going to be the blue cross or the black cross. Both are um, possible here. Really, the black cross, you will need a little bit more side spin to the left, so it all depends what ball you have been using in the main hole. But either way, it's all about getting the pace right. But we want to bounce just to the top right of the middle of the bunkers there. Red cross is for third tee. In tailwind, that will be a sniper bounce over. And you've got to get pretty close on that one, especially if you are playing this from third tee, because the chances are people will be a lot more dialed in. Obviously, if we do have headwind from third tee, you're going to have to go um, in between the bunkers playing with the driver. So 20% elevation here. You do really need to be within three yards preferably within two to be honest but this is one you are going to have to note down spins according to wind strength here because like i said pace is the key here because you do not want to roll too long on this green and finally we go to the trickiest of the par threes this is pretty tricky in tournament play um, but not as tricky as it can be in shootout especially if it's new to you because at least in tournaments we can play practice and dial it in however in tour play, we've just got to get as close as we can. So if you are playing it from rookie, you can either bounce over or you can go for a rough bump. On the blue cross for the rough bump is the most consistent one, but you do, of course, have to get your adjustment right here. And any errors in pull angle could mean that you miss the rough. Black cross is, of course, the bounce over. The problem with that shot is it's very difficult 
to get a consistent bounce point. Same for middle T, you've got two options with the rough bump if you don't want the bounce over. The red cross, you will need something with three bars of side spin though, so most likely if you are playing from middle T, if you don't want to do the bounce over, go with the rough bump nearest the green, which is the blue cross. Uh, finally, is worth mentioning uh, for the um, third T players, the rough bump usually is the red cross there. It is tricky though, again, this is one you're gonna have to do some trial and error on. If we do have certain wind directions though, one route that isn't shown, and if you just imagine the landing point between the two and the five, where I've got 25%, you will be bouncing there with the relevant spins to bring the ball in from right to left. This is a tricky one. I would like to say within four is gonna be good. But of course, the more this is in the higher tours and the longer this course has been featured in the game, then you will, of course, need to get closer within time. So within three is going to be a much better shout on this hole. Thank you very much for watching this course guide video. If you have found it useful, please do share amongst your friends in the game. And don't forget to check out the rest of the course guides in the playlist. If you do have any questions whatsoever, please do join us on Facebook in our group, BK Golf Clash. We have thousands of members there. Link is in the video description down below. Friendly place where players of the game of all skill levels can interact, help each other out and ask questions. So uh, you can ask away there. No question will be considered too trivial. Wonderful people there will be happy to help out. Thank you once again for watching. See you all very soon. Bye for now.